Good evening guys, this is Sumail. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is the first walkthrough video on my channel. The recent video I posted of light scenes of a bedroom and an outdoor bathroom had a huge request to make a walkthrough video. So here we are. This video, I'll be dividing it into two parts. The first part will be talking about the interiors of the space, the design and uh, the different 3D models I'm using to design it. And uh, second half of the video will be discussing about the lighting and what are the different types of light scenes I wanted to create within this space. Also we will discuss about the different types of luminous I'm using in this project. So let's get started. So here we have the main entrance of the room and uh, next to it we have a huge floor to ceiling windows. When we enter the room from this main door, towards the right side, I have a large window, floor to ceiling. It has multiple benefits. Because of this huge window, we have enough of daylighting in this space. Of course, if, we, if this is exposed to the external side, it connects the outdoor space with the interior space and the scale of the project, the scale of the room, because of interior and exterior connections seems large. That's the reason we have a large window here. Uh, this is my personal project and the interior elements, the design, what you see here is my ideas. It may differ from the design ideas from the from a professional interior designer or an architect if you talk about the 3d models then apart from the large window the next thing i have here is a hanging tv unit the advantage of this kind of uh, tv unit is that it is rotatable and tiltable okay depending upon where i'm sitting and watching the tv then i can easily rotate and tilt it talking about the 3d models for this space this curtains I have made it using the dialogues extrusion volumes. Using the 3D models within the dialogues for making your own makes it very easy to handle the files. And uh, this one I have made both the curtains. And then we have a TV unit. I made it using an extrusion volume and then I cut it a small cube size and added a texture of a TV. It's a difference between two objects. And this one is a standard cylindrical shape from dialogues then we have a small plant unit i always try to add some greens within the space because it adds that natural touch to the space it it brings freshness so this one of course i have a, this is a sketchup model i have imported into the dialogues and uh, if you see major of my projects have this plan because uh, it has nice detailing then when we talk about right in front when we are entering to this space we have a sitting area a small sofa with a coffee table i added a small sitting space here because this uh, bedroom is a bit huge and uh, we need extra seating space suppose if i'm working here or just watching a tv back wall of this uh, sofa i have kept it plain without adding any artwork or anything because uh, i wanted to keep this view minimal talking about the 3d models here of course this one is uh, imported from sketchup you may be a bit amazed uh, seeing i'm importing such high poly size 3d models while in my tutorials i say you not to import 3d models above 1 mb but in this whole project this whole uh, bedroom and outdoor bathroom i have not imported more than four to five 3d models and uh, other thing is that uh, in this one file it's just a uh, bedroom and the outdoor bathroom and uh, since i'm not working on a whole villa in one file that's the reason i have imported uh, this 3d model if you want to learn in detail how to manage and optimize 3d models within the dialogues i have a separate detailed tutorial on that i'll provide the link of that video in the description please go and check then i have a coffee table this one i have made it in the dialogues it's a combination of two objects perfect now here is our main element of our bedroom the ascent wall and the bed in the center so there are more details here so let's discuss one by one when we come through the sofa here towards the right side i have large doors 
this one are actually the window apertures and the arch window from the dialux apertures i wanted to have arch shaped doors here because uh, i was planning for ascent wall which is more of a curved surfaces i like to add the elements uh, within the interior space which are more of circular shape or arched shapes uh, without any edgy corners edgy corners are more of an industrial look um, and adding a curved surfaces or a smooth surfaces gives you that warm vibe to this talking about the main and the best part of this room is this ascent wall i wanted the ceiling to be in a curved shape but i but i didn't want to go with the usual circular ceiling between the center or the circular cutouts i wanted something to be in a bit unique sense to it and this reason i created this half arched shape or a half a uh, curve shaped ceiling so this one i have a, a ceiling of fall ceiling and then so then i have the circular cutout to the ceiling this i have drawn it using a cutout tool i have a detailed video on this too i have made a video on uh, how to make a barrel wall ceiling in dialog zero i have used the same process the thing is uh, first i drew the ceiling i gave it a thickness and then i used this circular cut out to cut to cut the half circle shape from the ceiling then to break the to break the continuity of this ceiling what i did was added a slit in between separating making this two parts separate the intention to add a slit in between was that uh, i wanted to give it a pop out effect to the ceiling i didn't want to make it feel like a uniform slide of a wall to ceiling structure i wanted to add a character to it and that's the reason i made the slit and uh, the coating inside inside the slit is of wood i didn't want it to give any metal coating because it might have high reflectance earthly and natural tones that's that's the reason i went with the uh, wooden textures here talking about the other detail here the wall starts above a small height here because i have an led strip placed here which will act as a night lighting for this one this one actually i made it from a column so i kept it at height above 0.15 to 0.2 meters above that and uh, this is a column this is a column and then i have a ceiling and within the ceiling i have a circular cut out so this is about the ceiling here then i have a central piece bed this bed is imported from the uh, sketchup and uh, bedside tables i have made it within the dialux itself it's a combination of two or three objects for the bedside tables the finishing i used this is a black glass i have a large mirror the mirror is not a fully reflective mirror it's actually a black tinted mirror because i want the reflection but i don't want it to be like a proper mirror i just want to create an illusion of extension of the space then when we talk about this wall this wall is complete plain wood wall but to add some character to this wall i added some wooden columns this all are wooden columns and uh, i added a huge round mirror to it this is also an vertical cylinder here this is a cube this has a dressing table to the room and no objects are imported over here see this space apart from the bed sofa and a plant all other small small details which you see are all made within the dialog either by using the available objects in the dialogs or making by myself the bed bench you see here is made within the dialog so this is about the interiors of this bedroom and the 3d models i have used within this space now let's check our outdoor bathroom this is the entrance for the outdoor bathroom and when we enter through the door we have a stepping stones leading us to the outdoor shower area and we have a outdoor bathtub i have a detailing here for placing a placing a led strip for this one this one I have drawn within the indoor counter itself i just added the textures of gray wall texture and a stone wall texture to this one and uh, and here i used a cut out tool to uh, to have this opening to keep some bathroom accessories and uh, 
added some greens too this one of course this is imported from this sketchup this one i have made use of platform the room elements this too is a platform then i have a greens here which i used a texture of grass for this then towards the right side i have a glass door and uh, here i added a wooden columns uh, similar wooden columns i showed you in the bedroom i repeated it here because a uh, few elements which we repeat within the interior space i feel that kinds of connect the spaces and make it look like a one that's the reason i added a wooden beam here and also it connects this bathroom with the outdoor cabin we have here this is a door for the outdoor cabin this is an empty space uh, we don't have much here the walls are dark in color i have a tiled wall here with the gray flooring this actually is uh, we can have a couch here and uh, highlight about the space the cabin here is for stargazers like me to enjoy the night sky talking about the skylight this is an aperture from your dialogues apertures roof window i added the dimensions required to create a continuous roof lighting or a skylight to this space so this was about the outdoor bathroom and the outdoor cabin let's go inside let's take a top view perfect now i will run the calculation for this project and then we'll be discussing about the different luminous i'm using to create a lighting design for this project calculation is completed and now let's talk about the lighting let's walk into the room from the main entrance when we enter into the room where we have a huge large windows and there i have a small opening in the ceiling for curtain grazers curtain grazers are basically a very good idea to add a indirect lighting to your room so here for the curtain grazers i have used the normal led strip so here i'm using led strip of lux led it is of 6.4 watts per meter while choosing the wattage for your led strip especially for the purpose of indirect lighting or a wall grazers do not go for the wattage and the lumen output which is too low or too high See if you're if you're using the wattage and the lumen output of the LED strip to be very less, usually this cornices or indirect lighting or the space for curtain grazer light, this is actually a very narrow space and cleaning this space is a bit difficult whatsoever the space may be, be it residential or any other commercial or your retail project. Over the time the dust particles may get accumulated over the surface of your LED strip and they may get more dimmer. So if you opt for very less wattage and less lumen output, over the time you may not have enough brightness from this LED strip lights. Next thing, if you are opting for very high wattage and very high lumen output, then considering the small space of the installation, it may appear as a very bright light or a very harsh light from a very narrow space select the voltage and the lumen output in a way which is not too high or not too low considering the application of the space okay so this was about curtain grazer next here i have a nice plant here to accentuate this planter i have i'm using a small spotlight this is from linear light the voltage of this one is very less 4 watts with 191 lumens talking about the beam angle it is a narrow spot the optic is not too narrow and not too wider if it is too narrow considering the size of my plant here it will not cover the whole plant i want to accentuate all the leaves of the planter because it will also cast some nice shadows beneath i always like the shadows casted by our overhead lighting by accentuating the planters in the indoor so i needed this effect that's the reason i didn't opt for very narrow beam angle okay next over the sofa i haven't added any lighting nor for the table if required we'll go for a wall mount lighting here wall sconces or we can even opt for a floor lamp here but for now i haven't added any lighting because the application of this space is that it's for relaxing so i don't need any task lighting then as a general lighting layer and also a feature element i have added a chandelier here you may ask me that's where there's a 
TV behind and you're uh, adding a huge chandelier in the center it may have it may act as a hurdle while I'm watching a TV lying on the bed or maybe there will be some glare issues caused by the chandelier on the TV screen well yes you may have such problems but uh, consider the type of the TV here this TV comes with a rod wherein the height of the TV is adjustable plus the TV is rotatable and also tiltable so I can rotate and tilt it as per as per my comfortability then talking about the lighting and it has uh, three steps step one two lights then we have another step two and then step three so only the light to fall on the ceiling I can on only these two lights of the chandelier on and rest all to be off there's a possibility to do that even in the light scenes so here if you see when I choose the light scene this is my chandelier and I have six gears here to adjust the level of brightness I need switch off or on any individual luminaire or even dim it so there is a even the lighting I can adjust as per the requirement when the TV is not in use I can keep it all on when I'm switching on the TV and I still require the chandelier then I can keep only the two lights above in the chandelier to be on so that it is illuminating only the ceiling without casting any harsh light or a glare on the on the TV so this is about the chandelier and uh, coming towards the bed I have two side tables here and uh, on one side table I have used a wall sconce this is from Louis Paulson so this is good to have enough illumination on the table and also it can add as a task lighting layer if someone is uh, night reading then towards this side or for this bedside table I have pendant light this is also from a Louis Paulson and uh, so here is an LED strip this too is of 6.4 watts but of course it comes with a dimmable feature and uh, if you feel 6.4 watts is a bit high then you can of course dim it or you can use a le lesser voltage lesser lumen LED strip here because the application here is only to give a night lighting layer to the space then coming towards the ceiling since I have this curve shaped very nice curve shaped in the ceiling and then I have a, a small gap between my main ceiling and this curved ceiling I added a LED strip here same one with 6.4 watts so whenever you're working on with the lighting make sure you have hierarchy in lighting okay when it's a residential project or even your retail or commercial project always have a hierarchy in the space that's how you bring a character within the space by the lighting here i have one lighting layer above one below and then we have two nice decorative elements and uh, then i have a bed bench here and uh, right above the bed bench to eliminate this i have added three small same spotlights i have used for the planter this one the same one I have used here too which is of 4 watts and 191 lumens same beam angle so when you see this space from here hierarchy in lighting levels this is the hierarchy see this one is much brighter okay and then there is brightness here but enough illumination to see and then I have another layer of my night lighting and then I have another layer of my decorative lighting and there is one nice small detail of curve lighting above so there is hierarchy in lighting brightness too that's how you create light scenes as well adding four lights at four corners of the room is not a design so when you're designing a space consider the application of the space consider what elements you can elevate more with the lighting try to create a nice ambience with the lighting and towards this side I have a nice detailing of a wooden columns what I used here is a in-ground up lighters this is from Iguzini it is just one watts and it is a very narrow optics it will not spill the light lighting effect here it is only illuminating within the columns so it uh, there's no light spill and the brightness of this lighting is also very less because I'm using one watts this one I added because I wanted a focal point to this wall because this whole wall plane okay, with this light element it will act as a focal point to this mirror then to the mirror I have nice round big mirror and added a backlighting to this mirror here LED strip I have used of 0.25 meters the same 
of uh, 6 volt but this one is 0.25 meters when you are editing the LED strip you are reducing the length of the LED strip then with that you have to accordingly calculate your voltages and lumen out so this is a nice backlighting for this mirror a lot of character to this wall so these are the different lighting layers for this one we will see the light sense of this whole room now let's enter the bathroom outdoor bathroom here from here and uh, we are into outdoor bathroom when we enter the bathroom we we had a stepping stones and what i did was i added an led strip underneath that stepping stone because i wanted to create the floating effect on this when you are using something for outdoor make sure you are using a with higher right I, because this luminous will be exposed for more dust and water uh, the space is an outdoor bathroom here so we don't want our luminous to fail because of water that's the reason we'll go for ip rated luminous for all the luminous i'm using within this space if you want to understand in detail what are the different ip ratings for different applications within the bathroom i have a detailed video on designing a bathroom lighting i'll, I'll provide a link of that video in the description please go and watch out next i have a detail in the wall to place a led strip and uh, i have placed an led strip here here to make sure you're not using a voltage or a lumen output that's too less or too high also consider your reflection factors when you're using when you're se selecting the voltage and the lumen output of a luminaire here all the walls darker tones so the reflection factors of this wall may be l less than 10 if you have a project wherein the walls are darker in color then try to go with a little bit higher voltage and lumen because the darker tones of color will absorb the light they don't reflect the light more that's the reason you can go for a little bit higher voltage of course if you have a dimming option it will be very good then then i have a cove lighting detail which i can use even as a wall grazer for my black tile wall and then near the bathtub i have used uh, two uplighters here since i don't have any ceiling here i have a skylight and uh, i will i can't mount anything on the ceiling that's the reason i added a layer of uplights here plus i have a niche lighting here with the led strip here and if you want to have more illumination on the bathtub you can go for some wall sconces instead of uplighters here or if the bathtub is internally lit then then you can avoid using any other external sources of wall scones lighting here so this was about outdoor bathroom then let's go into the cabin in the cabin i have very minimal amount of lighting because uh, this space is more for stargaze so here i have one layer of a cove light and then i have a small nice floor lamp here from let's see for so this is about lighting in the cabin let's take a top view So here is a small light scene video of the space.
this is it guys in this video this was my first walkthrough video let me know in the comments how was this first walkthrough video and uh, if you want me to make more such detailed walkthrough videos so that i can plan ahead and uh, so this is it guys in this video if you like this video please hit a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and stay tuned to explore more in dialogues with me thank you